not letting me speak. How? You're speaking now? No. You're cutting her off. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, I, I feel no. like I have to. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what's happening? Oh, no. This is the Alec guy yesterday in Hassan's chat. Ah, Hassan, can you see my last chats, please? Ah, Hassan, can you check my last chats, please? The only reason that she looks black is because of the way that her hair is. Okay, here's... Oh my God, that's me. White Americans have way more advantages than black Americans. Do white Americans have more advantages because they're white or do just white Americans have advantages because of historic factors? Um, I think that people wanna argue at the end of the day over whether it's because you're white or not. I think that the answer is because you're white in the past and that's how it kind of carries over to today. You know, even in times of the United States history where black people try to build wealth, you, you know, with uh, the Tulsa riots and everything where, yeah, they, that this wealth has been destroyed. And something that's upsetting to me is when conservatives talk about how that's, we can't blame the past for what's happening in the present. That is true to some extent, but then in the next breath they'll talk about how important it is to have dual parent households, how important it, has, it is to have a strong family, to have responsibility passed on. I feel like two or three of my answers were spliced together for this one but from parent to child and we've seen in the past that because okay. of racial issues that process Maybe has not. been severely disrupted the funny thing is is that agreeing with all these things is when I did my research when I was younger which arrived me to my standpoint of being a conservative because I believed it was racist Democrat liberal ideologies and policies dating all the way back to the 1800s all the way up to the 1960s and then you, the purported big switch but I think it was more so when Democrats decided to be a bit more cloak and dagger about their true opinions of black people and be more uh, secretive and more, oh, we want to help you by, you know, doing these things and seeing them as a doing barrier. Doing uh, Affirmative action, welfare, all sorts so of wait. things. You were doing the one HP, I understand voice for the whole episode. Okay, again, to reiterate, because I understand that a lot of you guys have zero social awareness and are terminally autistic, which is fine. Um, so the name of the show that I'm on is called, um, I think it's called F*** Your Face with Fact... your face with facts and oh no 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 sorry it's not that one it's not the f your face with facts and logic episode it's called middle ground that's the name of this show when you go on the show they tell you don't attack people let people speak our goal is to have a conversation and to try to find middle ground because that's the name of the show okay i understand that you can't see sometimes because there's like four and a half words before it says middle ground here in the title so i know that's a big challenge for a lot of you guys but um just if you read to the end of the title of the video, you can kind of see maybe why my intonation and my approach to the episode was a little bit more conciliatory than I would be on the your face with facts and logic show, okay? Can you explain the switch? I'm not from America. I don't understand why it would happen. Party switching and people switching around in platforms and everything is a little bit complicated. Here's the true reality. The true reality is that anybody that appeals to what a political party was like 60, 70, 80, 90 years ago probably doesn't have much of value to say about politics. The reality is it just, it's not very relevant to today. Nobody cares what the Republicans, hasn't the Republican party in the United States existed for like over 200 years? How long has GOP existed in the United States? was founded in 1854. Do I care what the GOP thought of in the year 1854? Have I, do I care what, what a party that was created 180, 170 years ago? Not really. Um, no, I don't. I don't think it's relevant. Uh, if you want to do like a historical analysis or something, maybe if you're curious about that back then, but I'm not looking. I, I don't think that what a politician said in 1920 is gonna be instructive on what the party thinks of today. Um, if you look at the states that were Democrat versus the states that were Republican, right? This is why people talk about a big switch is because it's hard to imagine that all of these people in these Republican states went ahead and moved to these Southern states and all these Democrats went ahead and moved to these Northern states. It seems like there was probably a different adoption of ideas but, um, and platforms between both parties, right? This is why people say there is a big switch. So when people say the Democrats are the racist ones, like, okay, you mean the people in Oklahoma, Louisiana, Georgia, Tennessee, like South Carolina, those, all of those Democrats, like who do you think those people are today? Who do you think their descendants are today? You think all of them went up and moved to California? Yeah, that's why people say there's a big switch. But again, the reality is like when people say, when people say that like, oh, the KKK, that was the party of the Democrats. But who's more likely to be in the KKK today? A Democrat or Republican? Do you think they're voting for Bush? Or do you think they're voting for Biden? Who, who, who do you think? Like, that's why um, anything pre-Nixon is irrelevant to modern politics. Yeah, if, anything pre-Reagan. Like, anything pre-Bush Jr., really. Because even the neocons to the Republicans today are completely different, right? Because Bush-era conservatives are pro-big business. They're like... 
tepid on immigration. Um, because on one hand, they don't like brown people, but on another hand, they really like cheap labor. Um, they're very hawkish on foreign policy. This is the party that got us into Iraq, that got us into Afghanistan, that wanted us all over the Middle East, uh, that did the first Gulf War as well, I believe, right? Um, even Clinton, you know, brought us Bosnia and shit. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just saying that, like, everything is, um, everything is kind of different politically. Things change and evolve. For people who want to go back and say, like, oh, well, in 1950, the Democrats and the Republicans, like, who cares? It's not relevant at all to today's political landscape. And you know that. We all know that. Nobody here thinks that the KKK are going to be out there voting for Barack Obama, okay? Nobody out here thinks that the KKK is going to be marching up another street for Biden. Come on, guys. That's, we just, we know that's not the case. It's just, it's a really, really, really silly argument that people use as, like, a gotcha. Oh, uh, that's a good point too. Moonflight, I think, or Moonlight72 in Kick Chat, brought to you by Kick Chat. Kick.com. Uh, that's a really good point too. Destiny, why not ask Republicans, oh, why do, or why not ask why Republicans always claim the Confederates when they were the Democrats? So the selective picking and choosing of like, um, wait, hold on, when was the Democratic Party started? Democratic Party started USA. Oh, it was in 1828. Um, yeah, it's dumb. These are these are these are like stupid points. They don't they don't they don't further a conversation at all. These are like cheap gotchas that you're looking for in um in in political discussions. Yeah. Hold on. I'm getting I'm getting baited. I'm getting baited by chat. Destiny, what are you talking about? Most KKK slash white supremacists that I've encountered did vote for Biden. They probably voted for Trump the first time around, but they aren't that married to one political party over another. You're telling me that White supremacists are voting for the guy that's a globo homo, that's pro trans people, that's pro LGB, all the other stuff, that's pro Ukraine, that those KKK white supremacist people are voting for Biden over Donald Trump, who is an isolationist, who's trying to curb immigration from co countries with people of color, who is extremely ultranationalist, who are you saying, are you basing your entire view of like white supremacists off of like Richard Spencer? off of Twitter. I just see four people bring up Richard Spencer. Like he's like the, he's like the standard KKK Nazi guy. Okay, that's great. So in the future, instead of saying white supremacy, just say, I saw Richard Spencer do this. Okay, gotcha. All right, all right. If you're working so this amount of hours the, and getting less than this amount of you're dollars, throwing, you're getting money you're from the government. The baby, yes, it is incentivizing. You're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I don't even know what that means in this scenario because yes, you, you're okay. Throwing, you want to talk about throwing babies okay, out with the bathwater? Margaret Sanger wanted to exterminate the black race because she thought they were weeds. So yeah, we can literally talk about throwing the baby out with the bathwater. That's okay. what Margaret Sanger. That's what Democrat policies wanted to do to my people. So Let's, that's why I feel so strongly about it because it is these policies that date back centuries that were built off of the death and poverty of my people. Let's take a breath. So, I'm breathing. Okay. Oh God, this guy's so condescending. Oh my God, he's so condescending. Oof. So a lot of babies aren't, but aren't, I am, oh. sadly. <laughs> I don't know what that means. When I say throw the baby out with the bathwater, you want to completely get rid of welfare, okay? Or at least the concern, I don't want to put that on you, you haven't said that, but the conservative apparatus does, clearly. So giving money to a group of people does not hurt them. I mean, it sure, can't. you're talking about a lottery, it just hey, take can't. money. But yes. there, are, there are strings take attached money. to that money. Take all the there money. There are strings attached to that money. Give them millions. Money. Make them all millionaires. I don't care. Giving money to black people does not hurt them. And that, and ha that has not that. happened, though. Generation by generation, the effects of slavery have been diluted. But generation by generation, the effects of racism, welfare-based policies, and things of that nature became even more great. So in the 18... 80s or so when we had our first black members of Congress, which were indeed Republicans, I think that was a great start for things. <laughs> but obviously we had terrible things that happened like the Tulsa massacre uh, among, you know, black people being chased out of their homes by the KKK. Sure. All funded by the Democrat Party, all supported by the Democrat okay, Party. Well, I, I mean, I need to stop you there. Uh, can you attribute not to the party? Everything. I feel like every... I feel like every single thing this guy is saying, the black conservative guy is saying is coming from a... Uh, it's got to be coming from like anthony brian logan videos or it's got to be coming from like because he's like he just rattles off like so many of these hyper partisan hackery points like margaret sanger wanted to kill all black people and the original kkk while well, they were democrats and the first black conservatives or the first black people in congress they were republicans and it's like bro hello are you okay like what I, I don't know how what any of this has to do with literally anything but to the ideology because i think when you think Regardless of whatever the party switch was, 
traditionally conservative values did not like that's more aligned with um, you know uh, uh, more racist policies it's in very this country. Difficult like to very compare twenty twenty. And then you say racist policies. Chinese conservatism to eighteen eighties conservatism. Oh, I was loving the one before. Oh, that was probably another reason why I didn't want to fucking nuke this guy, because it literally was like all four of us came up and he was the only one there too, yeah. So personally, I feel like there's really only one thing that white people have a true advantage over black people with, and it's that white people are less likely to be forced into a box. It happens with black people onto other black people, but it especially happens with white liberals onto black conservatives, where we are told that we are supposed to think a certain way, be a certain way, and if we're not, then we're called all these names like etc. And the worst of all is bootlicker. Because I hate when a white liberal tells me as a black man that I'm a bootlicker. Because then I ask whose boot am I- Oh shit, I didn't even connect these. I forgot that he said this. That's like even more egregious. I forgot that he said at the beginning of this that bootlicker was the worst thing to call him. And the guy actually does it. <laughs> oh shit. I licking because you're telling me as a white person that me as a black person that I'm licking your boot because I don't think in this box that you want me to frame my mentality in that to me is real racism and that's what we need to stop allowing to happen to us because black people are so quick now to not branch out and to have new ways of thinking or to I think as I've gotten older I I I feel like there is a value to being able to talk about the tokenization of certain figures it's something I still feel but I lean more and more against that like probably shouldn't box people's political views in a negative way based on some trait about them. So like, this is why I push back against like, probably shouldn't use like the word like Karen, probably shouldn't use like Uncle Tom or Coon, probably shouldn't use um, like race traitor. I think generally, um, I I'm sure there are, we could probably think of examples which are appropriate, but otherwise I feel like it probably gets in, you're probably just in too weird of an area where you are just like essentially boxing people in to like, well, if you're a race, you are, you're, you know, you mandatorily have to have, I don't think mandatorily is the word, like by, you know, you're mandated to have certain political views. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can probably think of examples, but I think that's something I've stuck away from probably for the past year or so or more. Um, no. Go into careers like agriculture and these other career paths that black people don't typically get into. It's not because of racism stopping them from getting in there. It's because we're told for so long that you have to follow this path and you have to think a certain way. I think America is a great place for a black person. I think I'm an American. Anything that's available to you is available to me and mine. I've personally never experienced white people having way more privileges than me. Like I'm sure you could find certain institutions where black people are treated differently but in general i don't think that i've missed out. this is something that undeniably even if you're a leftist progressive you know liberal whatever the united states is a pretty good country for most people um if the united states is a bad country for anybody then it's a bad country for poor people um i feel like sometimes progressives are a little bit too quick to fall on their sword and be like america is one of the most racist countries america has so many problems with racism i was like man I don't know, dude. Black people have problems in a lot of different countries around the world, okay? British people are pretty racist towards a lot of people. Uh, you know, French people have a lot of problems with Muslims and black people, then Africans especially. Like, yeah, like a lot of countries in Europe have a lot of problems with racism. The idea that America is like uniquely bad or even worse than any, I think America is one of the best countries in the world when it comes to uh, integrating a ton of different type a ton of different types of people, a lot of different ethnicities and diversities together under one roof. I think we do that probably better than any country in the world. I think that's one of the few things I'm gonna do a diversity is our greatest strength. That's probably one of the few things that the United States does better than I think almost any other country. <clears throat> Doubt on anything because of being black. And if anything, it's given me more of a voice because people will want to hear what I say now because I'm black. <laughs> Singapore does it better. Yeah, but Singapore also, I think, executes you if they catch you with a fucking joint. So fuck that country, okay? <laughs> I don't care. So if anything, if I have more of a platform now just on the basis of being a black conservative and saying what's not popular than I would if I was just a white person who was also conservative. I agree with the Supreme Court's decision to end affirmative action. I think affirmative action has served its purpose. I think that it was necessary for a particular time. And I think that every black person knows how to get into college. Every black, I mean, you can pull out the, the names, the Oprah, the oh, President Obama. You can pull out the, the head of Time Warner was black man, the Forbes was black man. We know what to do now. We don't need affirmative action anymore. And to me, affirmative action is offensive sometimes, especially nowadays, because um, I have six children and uh, two boys, four girls. 
and uh, <clears throat> all of them went to Harvard and Columbia and this one and that one. And it would it breaks my heart to think that they uh, accomplished their that goal of getting to, into these institutions just because of the color of their skin. I can definitely say that it creates a lot of tension when you have affirmative action. I remember my first week at the University of Illinois, I was sitting with some classmates and a white student turned to me and jokingly like, hey, Xavier, like, did you just attach a smiley face when you applied for this college? And I started asking what he meant and he said to me that he was like, you're black, I'm assuming you had decent grades. You could have just attached a smiley face and you would have gotten into the university. So I was livid by that and I went off, I started naming all my accomplishments and I felt so confident only for about an hour. Because then an hour later, I started saying to myself like, wow, like, did I actually earn my way in here? I started to have this insecurity and I started. So I think that, I think it's really important. I think a lot of people forget this. We're all human at the end of the day and we're all susceptible to kind of like weird biases because of the groups that we're a part of and because of what people tell us in our groups. Like I totally believe that some black people might be in schools and are, you know, thinking like, am I here because of affirmative action or did, uh, you know, something else. Um, I also think it's totally possible for this to happen in reverse with progressives where a black person doesn't get a job, you know, doesn't get into a school and he's like, was somebody racist towards me or was this fair? Um, Wondering to myself, did I earn this position myself? Would you ever do a deep dive into Russell Brown's videos? Or did my ancestors suffering earn this for me? And too, I've seen it in the sense of like affirmative action taking away from other people who are minorities. Like I had a friend who was Asian and he in high school and he really wanted to go to MIT. That was his dream school. He interned there. He was super like prepared to go there and he didn't get in. And you can only assume that it was because of affirmative action because they have such a large Asian population that they want to admit other people. Um, yeah, I was gonna actually argue that it's more racist now because it excludes so many Asian Americans from getting into universities right. who do deserve a spot and they can't get in because of affirmative affirmative action which again like you were saying was necessary at the time yeah. but now it's like anybody if you have the skills to do it and you're in America you can't yeah. you can get in I don't think affirmative action is the worst thing considering all the different types or aspects of a background you might take into account when somebody's getting into college whether they were in certain clubs you know Boy Scouts what type of classes they took that might not be available to everybody I don't think that factoring in the affirmative action is necessarily a bad thing but I feel like because of everything you guys have said the optics behind it are so horrible today that even if it is slightly beneficial in the long run for certain people I think we can probably refocus most of that into figuring out like the class that people come from the neighborhoods the backgrounds or whatever without it having to necessarily target race the only thing that I kind of wonder now that it's gone is instead of a black person being in school thinking like man am I here because I'm an affirmative action pick is it going to be a kid that is poor or a kid that's from a different zip code I think we should do think? away with all of it just like you submit an application no demographics why do they ask your sexuality like why do they ask all this I feel like I had a response to that, but it might have gotten edited, but I don't remember if I had a response to it. I don't want to say I had a response and then like for some reason the three and a half hour video gets leaked when I didn't, but. So, if affirmative action accomplished its purpose, why do we still see the disparities that we do in the professional workplace? If you average white wealth and compare it to black wealth totals, white people as a whole have about 50 times greater wealth than black people as a whole. Uh, Per capita. So I just don't understand why you think affirmative action has accomplished its purpose. I don't see Curious. that. Um, why How is it affirmative action's job to completely and totally fix everything? <laughs> like, is that is that our standard for? Do you assume that just because there is a disparity means it's because of a racial mm. issue? What else would it be from? I mean, uh, this guy also is constantly trying to dialogue tree race realism. I don't know if how much that'll come through on this, but in the entire thing, he was constantly trying to dialogue tree. Well, if it's not that, what else explains it? Is it black genes? Is it black genetics? Is it black? Like constantly trying to do this. Let me get a rubber one sec. Ooh. Bringing economic abilities, desire skills. to go, desire to. I mean, so zip code does fault, play man. a lot. If you grow up in a neighborhood that experiences a lot of trauma, you're not as likely to do as well in school, which means you're. Why did they grow up in a neighborhood that experiences a lot of trauma? I mean, lots of people do. Yes, but know. why specifically do more black people? Government assistance programs. Government assistance <laughs> programs. <laughs> this kid has like every stereotypical answer. Why? Like, I feel like I could write the script for these guys. I could write these shows. I want to be a writer for like some political drama. I could write. I could write everybody's lines. Like the t the first subject comes up, like welfare. Like, what do we need to do? And like the progressive was like, the blacker your skin, the more welfare 
to your kin. That would be like his slogan or whatever. And then the other, and then there'd be a black conservative like, well, actually, did you know that welfare uniquely hurts black families because it causes black men to run out of the households because black women just 20 different black men and they're incentivized to push the women out of the households so they can collect as much welfare as possible. Like, it's like every stereotypical answer you could ever imagine. This kid, this kid, I feel like I'm being really mean to him now. I think, he, to be fair, he's literally like, I want to say he's like 18 or 19, maybe 20, but he's he is a machine for talking points for every horrible black conservative argument you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. what? Try redlining. I mean, you can go into that if you'd like to, but let's take it a look relevant. at uh, the Great Societies Act, which was created to kick black fathers out of the home and get black mothers on welfare assistance. These things aren't beneficial for economics. These things aren't beneficial for actually paving a way for success for black children and black families. I mean, taking, you know, reducing a two-family household to a one-family household isn't going to make them the richest man in the world. It isn't even going to get them out of high school. Nonetheless, you mean the ability parent. to even get to college. You mean yeah, two-parent? The, the child, yes, but a two-parent household yeah. in comparison to a one-parent household, that child is not going to be nearly as successful. That child is more disposed to being sent into prison by doing crimes or not doing very well in school. So how are they even supposed to get that? you know, that wealth disparity shrunk if they aren't even able to get out of the community that is causing these problems for them. Something I think that this conversation illustrates is that like affirmative action is literally the very end of the line of a lot of different parts of a person's life. And by that point, trying to rectify all of the inequities that have existed to try to remedy any of that at the very end with affirmative action, it might just be too broad a brush. And maybe we'd be better served focusing on the earlier issues than trying to throw a kid who maybe, you know, can barely read at a sixth grade level into a college to hope that that's the thing that fixes the problem at the end of the line. I think affirmative action wasn't really supposed to like send kids to Harvard that weren't prepared to go to Harvard. I think that's quite a myth, in fact. I think those that have the qualities to get to Harvard were before affirmative action were could just completely overlooked. You know, uh, Clarence Thomas is like the perfect example, um, you know, regardless of what you uh, think about him. Um, he was able to get to Harvard because of affirmative action because, you know. We looked that up. I think that, I believe that was true. I think that was the case, which makes it extra ironic that he ruled the way that he did, but. It was, it focused on um, finding people that were, you know, again, like just overlooked. But, for those. but things in, ended up changing. It, it morphed into something else. So what started out as a good program of, of, of giving all black people or people um, with a lesser chance or lesser opportunity, it started out as that. And then it morphed it. And I'm not sure who morphed it, but it morphed into, OK, so now we have to have one black, one Hispanic, one this, one that. That's and not how that works. It, but hey, talk to the corporations, talk to the people who hire. God, he's so smug. <laughs> Uh. Talk to the board members who say we need to have a woman on a board, we need to have a black on the board, we need to have a, a Latina, a Latinx, whatever, on, on the board. So, so it morphed from, from helping us into now... Tokenization. Yes. So you have to have one of this, one of that. And well, when you start with a country where people only hire you if you're white, that's necessary. And I know that you said that it started good <laughs> and then ended whatever. And I don't think that affirmative action was perfect by any measure. But we still see really, really bad inequality. So if you're going to get rid of affirmative action, what's the replacement? The meritocracy. Is people need to There's no meritocracy in this yes, country. Is. You look at Elon Musk. He's destroying Twitter. There's no meritocracy. That's what a, he, it's, like, it's like everybody has the most soy random talking about. It's like, how can I shoehorn Elon Musk into this conversation? Like, bro, little bro, what are we talking about? Why? How? What? How, like, what is the relevant? Why? What? Ridiculous. Well, first thing I want to bounce back to is it's not a myth that there are like minorities that are being put into colleges that they're not ready for. If you look at a lot of these top universities, including Harvard, Yale, etc., you're going to see a lot of minorities on academic probation because they are being placed in universities that they are not ready for. They are not cut out for that just yet. And it even just makes sense if you look at how much they have to achieve in order to get there. Asian students on average have to score 450 points higher than a black student in order to get in the same university. So if you think of the universities that have courses, et cetera, that, gr that grade on a curve, 
you can only have so many people with an A, so many people with a B, et cetera. So that means that the bottom percentile is going to fail. Who is most likely, just based on logic, going to be the ones failing? It's going to be the people who didn't have the credentials to get there in the first place. And then I have to bounce back to... I want to I wanna get I want to get you on that point because yeah, get on I that would point. posit that the people who are least likely to have good... That I wanna, was the I fact check on the bottom, 10 fail. seconds back. Oh, wait, who did I miss a fact likely, check? Just based on logic, going to be the ones failing. It's going to be the people who didn't have the credentials to get there in the first place. And then I have to bounce back to... I want to... I want, to get, I want to get you on that point because I would posit that the oh, people fuck. who are least likely to have good though. outcomes in an academic setting are those who have to work two jobs, are those who have to drive there from home because they can't afford a dorm, are those who have to go into crippling financial debt These are the, and, and have other stresses in their life. They can't afford a doctor, they can't afford a dentist, they can't afford anything. I had to do so that too, though. Those are the That's people. not just black people. It's not just... But like, it's overwhelmingly... If numbers, there are more white people in poverty than black people. <laughs> if you look at the wrong numbers, but if the, you actually know, understand what, what you're talking numbers. about... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's so condescending. <laughs> Why would you say that? Also, to be clear, they literally told us, okay, that the show is called Middle Ground. We're supposed to be, like, pretty chill, okay? That's why I am being very chill, okay? He said raw, not wrong. Oh, did he say if you look at the wrong numbers? But it's overwhelmingly... If numbers, there are more white people in poverty than black people. <laughs> if you look at the wrong numbers, but if the, you actually know, what understand the wrong what you're talking numbers? about... Yeah. Oh, no, I'm talking about the ending part. The thing he said that was mean was that if you actually understand what you're talking about at the end. That's what I was saying. No, no the issue is, is poverty wrong. in general, though. I don't think it's like who's in poverty. It's like poverty sucks. It's, maybe it we should matter, make college free. It? And maybe we want to have, have for actually program, wouldn't be that necessary. It'll get program, even more ghetto. <laughs> If you have a program that says you are under, if you are under a certain income level, this is how we'll help you, that will overwhelmingly help black people at a far greater percentage than it will help white people. Trump supports black lives. What is your take on meritocracy? What is a factor when combined with nepotism and in individual circumstance? A true meritocracy is almost impossible, but like keep in mind that when we say meritocracy, people are really only talking about, it's like that analogy of disease of vegan gains. People are talking about the end of the track. They're not thinking about all the obstacles you have to jump through to get to where you're at. So when people say meritocracy, they really mean judging somebody based on where they're at at the very end of their journey, essentially, right? I think that president. How come you didn't walk out initially for this one? Was this does Trump support Donald Trump supports black lot? Because he doesn't. Trump Donald Trump says whatever the fuck. He doesn't even support white lives. Donald Trump supports whatever's best for him. That's it. If you think anything different, you're a deluded loser. No offense. I think that President Trump supports all lives. I think that he looks at all American citizens as equal. I don't see him doing anything that would make you feel like he does not support black lives. Um, that's, of course, going to lead into the conversation of Black Lives Matter, which was a movement and an organization with so much corruption. Donald Trump not supporting that organization doesn't mean that he doesn't support black lives. It just means that he doesn't support the fraudulent organization that's stealing so much money from so many people to do absolutely nothing with it, nor does he support a destructive movement that is destroying cities, communities, lives etc so i don't see why someone would think that president trump doesn't support black lives i've heard him say uh, he knows all the best black people he has all the best black friends i i do support black people all the time uh so sorry that was a very bad impression but um i, I don't think that i don't think donald trump wants bad things to happen to black people so in that respect i think blm really nerfed themselves for no reason the having the um organization called blm was just a nightmare of a fucking idea what a horrible 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 organization donald trump doesn't literally want bad things to happen to black people like i think a lot of conservatives do so i think that he just says the most pot <laughs> yeah i do think that i think uh, the most he says the things that will get him oh, elected man. so i don't think that he has any personal grudges against uh certain you know most people uh, he just says the most popular thing. So I, I think, like, Ron DeSantis would be, yeah, Ron DeSantis would you, be somebody that I think actually think, wants black people to be hurt. So by that standard, Jesus. yeah, Donald Trump supports black lives by leaps and bounds. You think Donald Trump says the most popular thing? Yeah. Really? Yes. Then why do so many people hate him? He got elected as president. Yes, he did. Yeah. He didn't win the popular vote. Neither time. Uh, that's a that's liberal what talking your side point. To say. <laughs> that's yeah. a liberal talking. I'm helping point. you here. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to see the logic in this. Obviously, he says things to be, to be elected as a politician, very similarly to how Joe Biden did. Except Joe Biden actually has a history of racism. <laughs> if he said things that people didn't uh. like, you wouldn't have been our president. So you like everything that Donald Trump says. You think everything he says is popular. I love a lot of the things he says. I think he's hilarious. When he said "big water," 
That was one of my favorite quotes. Big water. Water, big water, ocean water. Uh, oh. <laughs> he has the funniest one-liners, so I love a lot of the things he says. As far as policy, he sucks, but... I'm just shocked you're wearing a Hunter Biden hat. He likes a different kind of one-line. Oh, he's... I, I know, conservatives love talking about his... Oh, I didn't even understand that joke initially. He liked a different type of one-line. Oh, hunt, it was a Hunter Biden joke. Never mind. Okay, I got it. Good one. He's... I, I know, conservatives love talking about his... No, Coke. Somebody... It's different. <laughs> Coke, not... <laughs> but he misunderstood them. <laughs> As far as policy, he sucks, but... I'm just shocked you're wearing a Hunter Biden hat. He likes a different kind of one line. Oh, he's... I, I know, conservatives love talking about his... No, Coke. Somebody... It's different. Coke, not... <laughs> I mean, this man put, took out, like, a full page in a newspaper calling for the public execution of five black kids. His hotels, all of his businesses have rampant uh, history of denying black people apartments or whatever, so. I forgot about that. I, I just, should not have stepped forward. Uh, look, I mean, Donald Trump cares about Donald Trump. Um, True. So I don't think he really cares about anyone, I guess, True. unless you're like super rich or whatever. When you look at his history on racial issues, whether it's the shithole countries comment, the plethora of comments he made about Mexican people, um, I, just the comments he made about Muslims, the idea that Trump cares a, at all about some particular racial minority, I think is a little bit silly. I think Trump will say whatever he needs to say to rile up his base and to get elected. I don't True. I necessarily think those statements come from a place of hatred. I don't think he was ever saying specifically, oh, if, if you pray five times a day towards the east or towards Mega based on wherever you are, you're a bad person. I think he was saying if you like to fly planes into towers or behead people or throw people off of buildings, maybe you're not the most virtuous person out there. I, I supported Trump because um, all, he, he made all of the, he made the- Oh, thank you, Nacho Mama. I love you, buddy economy good and so the economy then impacted black people white people latino people it, it impacted everybody but trump he didn't think specifically i don't think about black people he True. thought about himself and he thought about True. how can i make america great for me and in making him and, and and i thought you know what i'm gonna go with this guy and the reason i'm gonna go with this guy is because if he can make america great for and he can make that it rise for everybody i'm going to benefit from that so that's why i went and that's why i voted for him that's why i supported him I how does that specifically you. benefit black people again he has He's a businessman, but he's also a racist businessman, like well documented so. So like, I just. Uh, and Biden's not? <laughs> Biden's not? When, yes, when he I, is. He yeah. created the yeah. crime okay. bill. So, so that's, but that's, that's uh, regardless of the well, point. Well, the Central Park the Five. That's what you brought up, right? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, he took actually, that full page okay, they were so, so I have He wanted them to be killed, <laughs> well, executed, just because they were black. That story. And but, he, he yeah. He bars people from attending his businesses or like renting apartments from all his like stupid Trump towers. I just like. I think Trump at that point was like many people in this room, particularly liberals, a victim of the media. <laughs> I think he was scared. I think he was ashamed of the things that he heard in the news and wanted to take action himself as a businessman, not as a. Why racist. are you infantilizing him? I also I don't oh like God. also real quick because you keep keep bringing up this comparison to the '93 crime bill from Biden. That crime bill, this was at the height of like violent crime and the crack epidemic in the United States. The Congressional Black Caucus supported that crime yes. bill. Everybody in the United States supported that crime bill. Mm -hmm. The idea that that crime bill was like some racist piece of legislation that Biden was just wheeling out because he hates black people, and that's somehow comparable to the, the Donald Trump's treatment of the Central Park Five that were already exonerated, that, that wasn't a victim of the media. The media said they were, they were done. Apparently, Donald Trump defended the article after the um, Central Park Five were exonerated, but he didn't, um, apparently he took that ad out before the trial was finished though, just as a heads up, apparently. I looked this up after. They were exonerated in court. They weren't there. Where, As where I understand it, there. the prosecutor of the of the, the the five, they actually he was a black guy, and so in being a black guy, he went and he looked at all the evidence and said these guys are guilty. Black people can also be racist against other black people. Or black just make mistakes. <laughs> So if anybody okay. does anything you disagree with in regards to the Central Park Five, even if they themselves are a black person, then they're, oh, they're just a self-loathing black person. They're just a racist black person. If they disagree that with me, they're racist. That prosecutor was doing his job. That's that's my policy. If they disagree with me, they're racist. I like that. I, I, think, so Trump is, I think Trump. I think Trump has policy. shown why? a history of but why, ignorant though? at best and racist at worst behavior. I didn't vote for him or Hillary because I just don't see him as a conservative hero. I don't even think he's a conservative. Uh, Fake personally. conservative. I voted Trump in 2016. Just so you all know. So we believe I'm you. just saying. So I need to exp I need you to elaborate yeah. on if people disagree with you, they're racist. Just in general. I was just. Kidding. He's just. Yeah, uh, yeah. You never just, know. Just like One the hat. Kind of it's, sorry if I triggered you. I'm sorry. You made no, a point. Sure. You He's made a so point. so condescending. Uh, a couple minutes back. Sorry, I triggered you. Um, <laughs> triggered conservative. He just kind of says these things to rile up his base. Um, 
why does he need to do that at the expense of black people then? He doesn't do that at the, I, have, I am a member of his base and I'm sitting there like, oh man, this is amazing. And I don't know, you can call me self-building, so you can call me self So you're saying you calling racist. for the I'm public execution of five black men that were exonerated to when rile up his base. When has he done that during the campaign trail? He didn't do that when he was a politician. Well, he again, did that when he was a it's everything, in New York it's everything Steve but said about the comments about Muslims, the comments hey, about uh, Mexican immigrants. Why does uh, never he about Mexican immigrants, never about Muslims, about terrorists and about criminals and rapists. I, These are very important delineations to make. And if you believe I that think when you, you understand the media about, or, oh, it's all Mexican it's, immigrants, I think it's more of you being, oh man, oh, these poor Mexicans, they need to be supported. It's more of that savior complex. Wow, what we're back again. What was the rationale again. behind axing or trying to ax DACA? Were those, these people were registered with the federal government, they were in school, they were doing everything that they needed to do. They had no home elsewhere. They were brought into this country as minors. Like, what's the explanation? For I that? think like, that requires more nuance. Like I mentioned before, I think there were some for people. Their I think Why there were some people feeding him bad policy advice, thinking, "Oh, this will be really good for your base," and he's doing a lot You're as just a president. That's okay. Him. That's okay if we feel that way. But so, so if so if I so if I take responsibility for something, if I say he has responsibility for something, well, then you're right. But if I'm saying, well, maybe there are some people around him advising him fal falsely, Dude, it's infantilizing. He him. was the president. There's no good way. He to called this the shots. What are you talking about? The only path forward to solving illegal immigration starts with Whoa, the everybody here. The reality is there's some 10 to 15 million illegal immigrants here. Might even be We're higher now. Them all. With the people who are already here, it, that's a lot more of a messy, nuanced conversation. Um, but as far as people coming in, I do think we need stronger borders and actual like vetting happening. And I just want to say, um, in, in Ronald Reagan's day, he was given the promise. He, was, he said, look, if, uh, if you go ahead and you pass this particular bill, we'll give these people amnesty and we're done. And it, it didn't happen. We didn't, uh, uh, illegal immigration continued even after Reagan already said we would give these people amnesty. So that's why we get a burr up our butt because um, he had already done it. Hopefully the devil's giving him amnesty. Jesus, that's, that's oh, terrible. Christ. No, that's no, that's base. Thank you. Tasteless. Why? Ninth circle, baby. Oh my, my God. Have changed from the past. I grew up in a conservative household, actually, in Ohio, and uh, my parents were always pretty political. So I'm, uh, I always stayed political. I was very religious uh, as a teenager. Uh, sometime during college and then afterwards, especially during COVID, um, my sister actually indoctrinated me into uh, a more leftist uh, position. And uh, I overcorrected a little bit. I started becoming yeah. pretty cringy as Think far so. as like, you know, sit down and let, you know, let the minorities all talk, right? Um, don't <laughs> oh, say anything, God. don't speak over them, et cetera. They would, you know, it was like the whole, you can't speak over Candace Owens, even if she's literally a Nazi kind of thing. Literally so, a um, Nazi. I, I'd, I stand by that. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of leveled out, thankfully, and I'm less cringe now. And Did you? Are you? <laughs> I cringed. Yeah. This is leveled yeah. out. Imagine if we would have been here a year ago. You yeah. can, I mean, maybe, maybe I am being cringe. Who cares? I, I, um, so I grew up conservative, but I did have more left-leaning ideas about, like, Black Lives Matter and critical race theory, and I was kind of, I was watching a lot of YouTube, <laughs> and, you know, I did agree that black people were oppressed and all of these different things and that we were kind of got the short end of the stick. And um, during 2020, when there was, you know, everything crazy was happening and I started uh, organizing rallies against uh, the mandates because I thought that they were just totally unconstitutional and un-American. And then George Floyd dies. And initially I was like enraged like everybody else. <clears throat> Somebody don't understand. I think the Vashrite being there actually was beneficial to you. It probably made the others more receptive to you since your approach is just stark contrast to his. Yeah, possibly, yeah. And then it started to become this weird, like, um, political, like, agenda masquerading or behind his face. <laughs> like, it just, the face of what was actually happening started to peel off. And I was like, oh, I mean, I would counter protest BLM activists at my town square when I lived in Texas. And they were some of the most just bitter, vile, oh. horrible people you could ever meet. Meanwhile, like the Confederate group that would protest there against them also, they were like the nicest people ever to me, <laughs> ironically. I grew up in a, dem in a democratic, not a democratic household, but kind of apolitical, but everybody was Democrat. And then I, I, I got a job. And when I got a job and I saw all the taxes come out and, this, and I started looking to the left and to the right and going, oh, my money's whittling away over here. And I said, you know what? After Reagan, I'm just going to go ahead and declare myself a Republican. And I've been a Republican ever since. My mom is pretty liberal. My She married my stepdad when I was like 15, 16 in high school. And he's super conservative, like loved Trump, diehard Trump fan. And um, they had a lot of like
like back and forth hearing the two sides like people who are on such polar opposites just like argue all the time about stuff seeing that there's a lot of similarities in both sides like the far radical left and the far radical right they have a lot of similarities they just don't want to come and like see it i started off actually kind of similar to you i went to a jesuit high school um, i grew up very conservative my mom uh, is cuban so ride or die wow repeated destiny lore now i ride or die um, Trump supporter. I think the point of my life when I was the most like libertarian was probably the lowest point of my life financially. And I think it's because something that conservatives do really well is they make you feel like you can always like succeed as long as you work hard enough. And that's something that progressives and liberals suck at. That you're a victim of systemic racism. You're black, so you're going to be discriminated against. You're a woman, so nobody's going to care about your feelings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas Republicans will tell you, listen, if you work hard, you can do whatever you want. Like just as long as you're willing to put in the work. And I felt that way up to the moment where I was losing my house, where I had an ex-girlfriend that was pregnant, where I had been fired from my previous job there was a whole bunch of horrible stuff going on in my life and I very very luckily got into online content creation and from there as I started to make more money I started to pay more taxes when I get older and I look at taxes that come out of my paycheck um, I just I mean I care a little bit but it was just so funny to me that back when I was making 15 20 thousand a year I'm like I gotta vote for the lower tax bracket blah 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 like I'm barely paying any taxes anyways and you know now that I'm older like if the government wants to take you know a few you know 10 20 whatever how many more thousand dollars out you just said you worked hard I when did, but I got very, very, very lucky doing so. Very lucky. Do you think it's just luck? It's not just luck, but the difference is that born into a wealthier family, you can make so many more mistakes in life. And when you're born poor, you get like one or two before your life is over. And that's really sad to me. When I was young, I used to jump for joy and say, oh yeah, Obama, black president, that's so amazing. He's the same color as me. But when I started to do more research, one of the biggest things I was confused about is, well, why is he a Democrat? What is a Democrat? I did more research about the Democrat party. And sure, you guys are going to pop off about the head saying, oh, there's a party switch and the Southern strategy and all these things. Which is true. <laughs> Which you may say is true, I don't believe it is true at all. You're I wrong. understand, you know, you may think I'm wrong. You are. However, one of the biggest questions I had was why is Obama in the same party as the people that started the KKK, the same people that voted against God, that's such a stupid point. Civil Rights Act, the same people that are on the news talking about how black people aren't able to... I think one of the reasons why I avoided engaging a lot with the, with some of the factual, non-factual claims guys making because I realized that, like, this kid has probably literally exclusively consumed Republican or conservative propaganda for probably the past, like, five years of his life. And it would have had to, it, the whole show would have been trying to unravel every single stupid thing um, this guy is saying, like Jesus. Accomplished anything and need to be on welfare and need to be promoted uh, with affirmative action and things of that nature. I also, in terms of, I guess, of my political journey. I hate the once I was this, then something happened and it turned my whole political views around. Yeah, it shows that you probably didn't have very strong political views in the first place. Which, to be fair, if you're a kid, it's probably fair, right? Most people who are 14 to 18 don't have ultra strong political views. Um, that's super normal. Yeah. Um, I was uh, raised conservative, actually. Um, and then um, high school became, I guess, sort of apolitical. Uh, and then <laughs> throughout college and I guess just throughout my life since then, um, I think I've... I guess you can call me a progressive, you can call me, you know, socialist, whatever you, um, but um, I guess that's, I guess, in the area of where I fall. Um, you said that you were um, a Bernie fan in 2016 and then you transitioned to being, I guess, more conservative. Um, I guess, I don't know, to me, Bernie Sanders, um, from what he said to what you think now, what was the, the shift? Um, for me, it was socialism because back then I was a very broke college kid and I just had this mentality that everything should be free and I was feeling a bit entitled, like everything should be handed to me because I was black because I was very much in that mentality. As I learned more about free markets, as I learned more about capitalism, I started to appreciate that much more. I started to appreciate small business much more, um, limited government, low regulations. I just started to like that much more. But I would say just more when it comes to economics, I don't agree with him. Reparations are necessary. When we talk about reparations, I think that doing reparations in the way that a lot of people think of it, where we just give it to black people, I'm not an expert on this, but I think it would be more income based and that in itself, like I said earlier, uh, would uh, disproportionately benefit black people because if you recognize that they are disproportionately uh, affected, uh, by a systemic injustice, then doing it on like a class level would uplift proportionally more black people than white people or think, any other race. Yeah, I think like the, um, mostly like black GIs that were left out of like the New Deal, for instance, um, that to be able to come back and um, as a white American, as a white veteran to get um, a home loan and then build that generational wealth, um, 
you could not get that as a black American. Um, so there needs to be, I think reparations, I don't care really what form it comes from. Uh, I think free healthcare, uh, free college, so that everyone has like an equal opportunity to. Uh, Does it suck having someone debating for your side with such dog shit arguments? It is pretty annoying, but that's like just, that's what it means to be a, a liberal or whatever, I guess, because we have to share so much time with progressives that are fucking insane sometimes. But I mean, what are you going to do? Um, uh, to educate themselves, to build a better life for themselves. Um, so it's sort of like, uh, and I think um, Germany is also a perfect model to follow, um, you know, by uh, don't issuing, first of all, a formal apology, uh, which we haven't even done that, um, but also just like uh, um, donating to like different uh, funds and, you know, just I think a more equitable society striving for that is uh, reparations in and of itself. I have no problems with reparations if they had happened initially during the like slavery or the civil rights movement or any of that. But to try and do that now logistically just doesn't really make any sense. And like, where would this money come from? Like, we're in so much debt <laughs> as a nation. Would I get this money? I'm biracial or triracial. Like, do mixed people get it? And like, do Irish people get reparations when they were indentured servants? I think for reparations, if you can find specific instances of somebody being like actually deprived of something, um, whether you, specific instances of like the 40 acres and a meal pros, uh, promise, or whether you can find specific interest, uh, uh, cases of like Chinese people building railroads or Irish people, whatever, people being deprived of things, that's okay. But otherwise, yeah, it's a logistical nightmare. It, there's no possible way that we'd be able to do it well. Yeah, America's unique because we have bent over backwards for decades now, putting minorities in a position of privilege. I feel like we have done <laughs> have so we, much to give back to the communities that were obviously wronged. And I agree with both of you. Like, had this happened a long time ago, I would understand it. If we had specific incidences that we could trace where people were just completely screwed over, I would respect it. But right now, I don't deserve a payment for something my great, 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 great grandparents went through. And I don't think that white people are responsible for paying that to me either. I know we don't want to use the bird. Can you say that between a progressive and a liberal? Because depending on the progressive, they can be class-based or race-based. It just depends. Same with liberals. Um, I think progressive is just a farther left liberal. Progressive is like another way of saying far left, basically, in the United States. Um, I think that progressives can either be like bordering or are actually like socialists or communists, or progressives can just be very far left socially. I think that's what you'd say, like broadly in a very, very, very broad sense. Virgin, word virtue signaling, but it's sort of like a bribe for a vote in a, in a way, at least in my opinion. In states like California, where they've been throwing around the idea of, oh, we want to pay out this much money to every black citizen in there, uh, in this state, it's like, oh, are, are you serious? Because this is kind of like a, a joke, in my opinion. I think that if you, if we impose, or yeah, impose reparations now, I think it would rip America apart. I think that we're already separated enough as it is, and now you're going to have people walking around going, you owe me money, you owe me money, I'm not paying you any money. It would just really rip us apart. Giving somebody money doesn't mean anything if they don't know what to do with the money or how to handle the money. So if the primary issue in black culture or with black people is generational trauma, then maybe they need more therapy than they need money, honestly. Do you still consider yourself a progressive? I mean, like I would because I'm pretty sure I'm probably farther left than the average Democrat, I think, on probably both economic and social policies, but I'm not a socialist, I'm not a, I'm not a communist, um, and, I, uh, and I'm not soy, so I, I don't know, it's hard to say. <laughs> Which conservatives are also against. Well, that's kind of my <laughs> argument. Like if there is like that, like generational trauma or whatever, like I think, Examples of like free healthcare, um, it, they could see a therapist and not be, you know, fall into debt. And I think the argument of like what the logistical wild. nightmares of it, I think if we want to pay for something in this country, we usually find a way ha to do it, especially when it comes to the military. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, I mean, we pay for multi billion dollar it's, jets. It's not the, all the dollars, time. it's who's supposed to get them. Yeah. Not to attack progressives, but that, that is like the most progressive idea in the world is like, I can see the headlines like reparations voted on in Congress to be paid in the form of free therapy for people in the hood. That just sounds like the funniest thing in the world, but. Well, I also don't think it's gonna come directly from like, you know, job, white person to black person. Like, oh, you, you um, your lineage uh, affected his lineage. It is though, like in San Francisco, they were going to raise the average family or the average household in San Francisco was expected to pay $600,000 each with the $5 million per black person proposal that they had. And Jeez. I used to live in the San Francisco Bay Area and I was repulsed by that because you have so many homeless veterans on the streets and they were gonna give black people a home for as little as 
one dollar just for being black mind you slavery wasn't even in california so why that was going to be the case like i don't understand but it's extremely unrealistic to think that the average family in san francisco is the san francisco reparations thing real yeah it's um, it's wild. I don't. I don't even know if how where they got on that. Um, payments of five million dollars to every eligible black adult. The elimination of personal debt and tax burdens. Guaranteed annual incomes of at least ninety-seven thousand dollars for two hundred fifty years. And homes in San Francisco for just one dollar. It's just there's just a board right now just talking about it. None of this will get passed because there's no way they'd have the money for it. Um, these are like recommendations being made, but it's just so cringe. It's just stupid. I don't know. None of this is going anywhere can afford that. That's because Newsom wants to get reelected. <laughs> okay, but you don't really Precisely. care about homeless veterans, right? That's, like, that's just you, don't, you don't support idea. You don't know me. I feel like me. all your arguments are but, ad hominem. But, but you're yeah. Literally every single one ad hominem. You're here hominem. as a conservative. So, yes, so what policies do you support for homeless veterans? There's ways to address, I mean, specifically I, for homeless in general. That's a yeah. whole different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's say that we didn't find a middle ground in there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, but that's a great ending note. She had to stop us so many times because the Alec guy was fighting so much with people. It was getting really awkward. They had to keep it like, hold on, let's chill. Let's bring it back. Well, let's do this. Hold on. Let's stop here, guys. Like, <laughs> it was like, I was like, oh, damn. White liberals have a savior complex. Oh, I think this is the first question they asked us. First or second, maybe? I don't remember. Well, I gotta say, this is a shock. I never expected all four of you to just come forward and admit it, but you know what? I'm happy with these results. I just think it's uh, a lot of people, a lot of, I guess, uh, people, you know, of the left, whatever, um, can kind of fall into that trap of uh, thinking that, you know, black people as a monolith need to be saved as, like, as a whole. I have no shame about it. I have a savior complex as an older brother, and I will save you whether you like it or not. So oh that's just me. God. Well, it's definitely not, because a lot of us are really just exhausted of being viewed as our skin color. Because when you have this mindset that you need to save black people, and we're just sitting here minding our own business and living our lives the way we want to, I don't know why it is that people feel this immense pressure to be so apologetic and just always trying to cater and coddle to black people when we sh just want to be treated like everybody else. We're equal for a reason. I think especially recently with a lot of right stuff that's gone on, oh, no. protest stuff that's gone on, people on the left tend to infantilize a lot of different types of protesters. And especially even talking to, you know, some of the other black content creators I do content with, when you hear a lot of progressives come out and say, well, they don't have a choice but to riot or break into the store or while well, they're stealing, you know, these electronics or shoes for good reasons, you just don't realize it. I think a lot of people kind of look both ways and it's a little bit weird that there's such a complex on the left to excuse like every single possible negative behavior from somebody as long as they're a skin color that you're kind of in charge of protecting. I find that very offensive. Yeah. I, I find it's it extremely, really I, 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 it upsets <laughs> me um, to hear that because um, we're just like you, we just have, a, a different skin color and to hear that you have to you have to help me I would pay so much money to see a panel of like four black conservatives talking to Hassan it would be I think I think it would end with him calling them all the n-word and then storming out <laughs> I think I think that would be it he would have his PewDiePie moment right there it'd be over it's offensive to me I can do my I can do it on my own well, we have to break down sometimes why these riots happen. You know, MLK once said that riots are the voice of the unheard. So if you... <clears throat> Is it language or voice? It's language. Um, I'm sorry, hold on. I just want to read where this quote comes from because nobody's actually read the, um, the essay where this comes from because people seem to think that it's like a justification for um, riots, and it's not, okay? Um... <clears throat> I'll just, I'll just read the paragraph that it comes from. I'm sorry, I get triggered because people always quote this thing. Now, I wanted to say something about the fact that we have lived over these last two or three summers with agony, and we have seen our cities going up in flames. And I would be the first to say that I am still committed to militant, powerful, massive nonviolence as the most potent weapon in grappling with the problem from a direct action point of view. I'm absolutely convinced that a riot merely intensifies the fear of the white community while relieving the guilt. And I feel that we must always work with an effective, powerful weapon and method that brings about tangible results. But 
It is not enough for me to stand before you tonight and condemn riots. It would be morally irresponsible for me to do that without, at the same time, condemning the contingent, intolerable conditions that exist in our society. These conditions are the things that cause individuals to feel that they have no other alternative than to engage in violent rebellions to get attention. And I must say tonight that a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is an American and what is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last 12 or 15 years. It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned with tranquility and the status quo than about justice and humanity. Um, that's a paragraph out of this larger speech that he gives, but a lot of people cite this as though, I feel like when they cite this, they're trying to say that uh, MLK was supporting riots or whatever, but that, that's not true. That was not the case ever, but okay. You are to address the problem and stop the riots. You have to address the underlying inequality that has historically been pervasive. You know, even if you as individual people are doing fine and you don't want anybody else to uh, get in the way of that, that's cool, and I'm not going to get. I'm I'm not going to be the one to get in the way, but the the disparities are undeniable. So if you take pride in having like a white savior complex, what is it that you think that you're doing to save black people, and what is it that you think that you're saving black well, people from? I am trying to make the world a better place through whatever means I can, and but you're doing it on the backs of us. I uh, I wouldn't I, say so. Yeah, I I actually do. <laughs> I feel like like you want to be a savior for, and you're using me to make yourself feel good. That's, no. That's what How I'm How am hearing. I hurting you? You're, but you're not letting me have my own voice. You're not letting me speak. How? You're speaking now? No. You're cutting uh, her off. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, I, I feel no. like I have to. Yeah. Well, well what's happening? No. I mean, you're speaking you right now. That? You're speaking right now in this particular setting. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is, like, um, you, you, you took it back to riots and so forth. And it makes it seem like the only way that we as black people can voice our, have a voice is by riots. And then you need to come along and you need to say, okay, poor little black child, let me help you. Let me help you. That's offensive to me. And, and, and I feel like you're making yourself feel good about trying to tame, help us. In a, I also think that like when we talk about damage, I think especially when it comes to a lot of the shoplifting stuff that's going on in certain cities, you get a lot of white people that live in nice suburbs saying things like shoplifting is no big deal, that's fine. And then you'll catch YouTube videos of them later on being in a Walgreens in like a shoddy neighborhood and they're like, man, why is the deal? deodorant behind a locked case. It's very easy to sit behind a gated community and say, oh, well, you know, it's not a big deal, you know. Um, they, they steal because they have to. Riots are the language of the unheard. I think people haven't read the full context of that quote. When MLK was saying riots were the language of the unheard and you need to address the underlying condition, he wasn't condoning the rioting. He was just understanding it. Obviously, there are a bunch of white people that um, feel they need to be a savior, but I think there's a difference between helping and saving. Like, I don't think I would need to save black people, but I would tremendously love to help and um, make sure everyone has like uh, equal outcome or not equal outcome, but at least equal opportunity, which in my was one of no! the largest things. I, somebody tell me what part I was just at. I clicked the wrong thing on this. Hassan heard this and said he lives in a high crime area. Does he not know that we can see where he lives? Does he not know that we know that he lives in? Am I, I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but it counts as docs here or not. 32 minutes or something. People. I or think, any other race. Yeah, I think disproportionately benefit black people. Be Bernie's guys are going to pop off about the head saying, oh, there's a party switch in the Southern strategy and all these things. Which is true. We're virtue signaling, but it's sort of like a bribe for a vote in a, in a way. At least girls have a savior complex. It's such a complex on the left to excuse like every single possible negative behavior from somebody. Herb saying things like shoplifting is no big deal. That's fine. And oh, okay. you'll catch YouTube videos of them later on being in a Walgreens in like a shoddy neighborhood. And they're like, man, why is the deodorant behind a locked case? It's very easy to sit behind a gated community and say, oh, well, you know, it's not a big deal. You know, um, they, they steal because they have to, right? Bro, I'm seeing fucking pictures now on lay Reddit. I don't know if, the, if you guys have they rolled this out to your stores, but apparently in some stores now, like, the entire store is uh, behind cages now. Like, whole aisles now are behind lockboxes. So if you basically want to buy, like, if you want to buy, like, toothpaste and a toothbrush or whatever, you're going through, um, you, you, you have to go to the front and find a person to unlock shit. It's, like, insane. to the language of the unheard. I think people haven't read the full context of that quote. When MLK was saying riots were the language of the unheard and you need to address the underlying condition, he wasn't condoning the rioting, he was just understanding it. Obviously there are a bunch of white people that 
um, feel they need to be a savior, but I think there's a difference between helping and saving. Like, I don't think I would need to save black people, but I would tremendously love to help and um, make sure everyone has like uh, equal outcome or not equal outcome, but at least equal opportunity, which in my opinion, I feel we do not have in this country. So I didn't step forward just because I don't want to broad brush all white liberals as having a white savior complex. I have experienced white liberals who do have that and um, they're very unpleasant people. <laughs> but I don't think every single white person who's a liberal or who is an activist for BLM or any of those things necessarily has a white savior complex. I think that there's a lot of white people who genuinely think that black people are oppressed and they want to help and that's what they're told. What it seems like to me when most people have savior complex regardless of who, whom they're trying to save, it's like they're taking real pain and real trauma and using that as a way to push this political agenda but also to alleviate themselves of whatever guilt that they feel unnecessarily. Like I don't know why a white person today would feel guilty for things that happened decades ago, let alone something that happened centuries ago. I've never seen a white person say, I personally feel guilty for slavery. I Maybe they're out that. there, but th I've never heard that. Yeah. I was there a picture that I just saw or a video like a couple days ago? Was this fake or real? Where there were like a crowd of white people kneeling in front of a crowd of black people? Am I making this up? In second grade, when they taught us about slavery, almost every kid in my classroom would spend their it's entire old but time real? looking oh, okay. at black kids in that classroom. Oh, How was I supposed to not think, wow, these people are feeling guilty for something that they have no involvement in and I have no involvement in? Every kid in, in my classroom grade. understood the context. So. People hate feeling uncomfortable, and obviously you don't want to feel like the bad guy, and so I feel like it comes from a place of like, oh, well, like, let me make sure that I'm different and like, I'm showing you that I want to like, help you, but it comes across like I think it can land very poorly. I'll like, tell you what, stop it. Stop okay. it, because what happens is when you put yourself <laughs> as the white savior, what you do is you elevate yourself above the black person because you feel then like you have to save us. So just- I felt like the Michael Jackson, yeah. <laughs> or not Michael Jackson, the Michael Jordan thing. Stop it, just treat everybody regular Get and some normal. Help. Just, like if, just like I would treat you regular and normal, you treat us regular and normal rather you know than- Michael Jackson needed to get some help too, to be fair. <laughs> trying to save yeah, us. No, I, I just got one thing I wanted to bring up earlier about taxes because you were saying that you don't- Oh you, shit, here we go. You your job and you Hold were talking on. about how like you get the- Soy load, soy load, soy load it up. Load it up, boys. Load it up. Normal rather than trying to save yeah, us. No, I, I just got one thing I wanted to bring up earlier about taxes because you were saying that you don't, you, you had your job and you were talking about how like you get the tax every, every time and you're like seeing your tax go up. I worked in nursing homes in 2020 COVID. The last thing, that was on my mind when I watched 60 and 70 year olds on their deathbeds suffocating to death was taxes. I was worried about healthcare. I didn't give a shit about taxes in that time. So when I go to work every day, that's what I see. That's what I want to fix. I see, I see you once again uh, ele elevating yourself above the rest of us, and, and particularly at me, a white man elevating himself above a black person. That's he what, called that's, me a bootlicker. That's, 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 that's what he called that's me a bootlicker. Oh, no, I what, triggered what them I all. Hope, I'm sorry. I, I'm oh, sorry. I'm, I'm okay. chilling, buddy. Yes, so what are. I hope comes oh, out of this chilling. conversation is that we're all Americans, and because we're all Americans, we, and actually, we, we know that America has a bunch of problems, and I think every person here wants to solve the problems, and I think everybody is bringing what they have hey, to bro. the table with their ideas on how- Hello? Hey. Hi. Honestly, at this point uh, in the conversation, I think both sides are kind of cringe. Um, what was the bootlicker thing in reference to? Um, the black conservative guy with the facial hair. Is he the only one with the facial hair? I don't remember his name. Um, he mentioned earlier, I don't, we were arguing about, there was a con, there was a question about if, something about cops, like somehow cops came up. And he mentioned that like, I, he's in a community and he's got friends with cops. He's like, has six different cop friends. And I think the Alec guy, I think he said something like that must be six clean pairs of boots or something. Um, and then called him a bootlicker a couple times. <laughs> That's pretty fucking based. Um, yeah, honestly, like, I, I think that's fair to say when you start defending the fucking police. Um, I, I don't know how that guy made it seem as though that was racially charged. Like, I've called plenty of people fucking bootlickers for sucking up to the cops. Okay. I don't know what I'm supposed yeah. to say about that, but sure. 
Well, just uh, figured I'd give my two cents to that. Like, I, I don't know, just got pretty virtue signally here. Um, yeah, the soy about fucking caring about people dying rather than taxes, and then him fucking complaining about getting called a bootlicker and making this a racial thing, and that other chick saying white man elevating himself above everybody else. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, leave since uh, your chat doesn't seem to want me around, but when they want me back, um, you know, just call me. <laughs> okay, well, we're just Take pushing this, so have fun, be careful, bye. <laughs> <laughs> He's tenacious. I respect it. To get us to unify. This kind of stuff, eh, right? But you got something in there. Hopefully, I mean, I'm gonna give you the benefit, benefit of the doubt that you have something in there that's redeeming about you that would bring all of Americans together. So I hope that we end on the note of American. You and ITY. I, I would like to say I, we're all made in the image of God. Exactly. And so we all have our inerrant worth just because we're made in his image and we should treat each other as fellow image bearers, not just by the color of our skin. I mean, as Martin Luther King said. <laughs> he also yeah. did not like capitalism. I think something that's really challenging. I feel like MLK went back and forth on socialism, capitalism, but I think at the end, I'm pretty sure he was not a fan of socialism, but I'd, I'd have to go back and check that, but I don't think he was a fan of socialism at the end. Challenging. Um, I've definitely been guilty in the past of throwing around the Uncle Tom word. Uh, I used to be hardcore progressive. I'm still relatively progressive. But something that I've learned as time has gone on is being a white person isolates you from a lot of the different types of racial struggles that people go through. And those struggles can take a lot of different forms. Not just, you know, was my ancestor a slave and not just is my culture bad, but sometimes in the way that, you know, people grow and develop, right? Like, um, am I actually choosing these political beliefs because they mean something to me or is it because I'm black or my parents are black? Uh, if I speak a certain way, am I betraying my race? If I am a political I orientation, music or am, am I a bootlicker? And I think that it's important when you're coming from a progressive point of view to understand that even though there are conservatives that are black people, it's you have to treat them as individuals and not just come at it with this, like, you're black, you're a conservative, therefore here's like six or seven different slurs that I can use against you, but they're approved because I happen to be on the progressive side. Wow. I can't believe they cut a three and a half hour combo down to 45 minutes. That's wild. This was the Alec guy yesterday in Hassan's chat. Oh, he's trying to get his attention so much. I'm driving home from work, so I can't respond for a bit just for your information. Still listening, though. Wait for a chat. Okay, Hassan, I'm at home. This is another L take. I was trying too hard to just own it, and it didn't come off well at all. I f***ed up really bad here. See my last chat. Also want to say, watching this is like watching someone else who has control over your body. I don't know why I said some of the things I did in the moment. It's bizarre. I've beat myself up over it a lot the past couple days. At Hassan, can you see my last chats, please? At Hassan, can you check my last chats, please? Wide people happy. <laughs> I remember this one. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Nancy. Nancy, that's my mom's name. My um, dad named me after my great aunt. I was a slave. Okay, I'm sorry. Wow. The original video is so funny, and this is so not funny. I'm sorry. Oh, I was a this might be one of the least funny edits I've ever seen in my entire life. Who the f ruined this fing video? Destiny, look at this. Did he say Satan takes an L today? That's at least two years old? Gotcha. I mean, I see June 4th, 2020, so. Black people got on these as well. Don't be fooled. Listen, I'm good on all that, okay? Someone in comments on Reddit said it's just what this church does. Black people kneel too. Oh, that could be true. 
Now that you have a little mutual interest with Shapiro, you're going to reach out for a discussion. Yeah, I'll try to set something up. I've had one person reach out who's supposedly mutual, so. About terrorists and about criminals and rapists. I, to clarify, I do watch Vosh. I love that guy, okay? Uh, to whoever asked. Apparently this was the other guy. Not gonna lie, kind of hurt you thought I was a lib despite my takes on here, but also I get it. I definitely have that look to me, but like I said, I do owe a lot to you in terms of my political growth over the years because it actually... I'm not gonna lie, kind of hurt. He just copy pasted the poster three times. At Asanabi, he took pictures with the conservatives after the shoot. Wait, why is he talking about me? I owe you, Bernie, and Michael Brooks for where I am today politically. Oh, Jesus. me more of a voice because by the way i want to point out and i didn't point this out during jubilee like during the middle ground shooting but the only reason that she looks black is because of the way that her hair is okay her what me more of a voice because by the way i want to point out and i didn't point this out during jubilee like during the middle ground shooting but the only reason that she looks black is because of the way that her hair is okay her skin obviously is a little bit darker than mine there's some things about her complexion whatever but like if her hair were not done up like this then she doesn't even look black like she could easily pass as white And so if she just has like straight hair and she's walking around, then of course she's not going to feel the effects of ra of systemic racism as much as like somebody like this guy. Right? Like, am I crazy? She's like, um, I don't even really see it in my life. Well, yeah, if you don't wear your hair like that, you wouldn't have to now, would you? Anyway. People will want to hear what I say now. Be more of a voice because... By the way, I want... I feel like... I feel like she'd still be seen as black. Now I need to see her with straight hair. Somebody link her Instagram. Or some, does she do con, I don't even know. She might be a normie. I don't know if she does content. I feel like this person would be treated as a, IGs are linked in the Jubilee video. Me more of a voice because. By the way. <laughs> it's tall. Definitely a Vosh fan. <laughs> they got you locked up for life, my boy. The hell wrong with you? Hey, yo. That's yeah, tall. They got you locked up for life, my boy. The hell wrong with you? Hey, yo!